Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining this Sunday service. This morning, we are having the All Sangha celebrating All Sangha Memorial Service. Then you see on the slide show uh, our loved ones' names, our maybe your family members, then maybe your Dharma friends. Uh, we probably used to listen to the Buddha Dharma together, those names and pictures on the slide show. So then, uh, I'm not sure, but you know, you, you may lost your family member or Dharma friends within this year or last couple of years. So I would like to express my deepest condolences to the family and the friends first. So this is the Buddhist memorial service. Buddhist memorial service. We often chant Amida Sutra, that just, just like you know, we chanted this morning. I was really impressed by. You are chanting. How many of you were able to chant until the end? <laughs> wow, great. So, so, yes. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> so, you know, you usually chant Jusege or Sambutsuge in a shorter, then maybe chant the sutra slow. The Amida Sutra is maybe longer and faster, uh, then you have to concentrate, otherwise, you lost. So maybe that's good for your training to concentrate one things. So maybe we can try some other time too. So besides Amida Sutra, uh, for the Jodo Shinshu tradition, Amida Sutra, and one more thing, you know, I minister usually read. It is the white ashes, white ashes. For the uh, memorial, Buddhist memorial service, the English translation is written on the service program. So there is one translation on the purple service book, but this is kind of updated version. This is more uh, latest translation from uh, Honganji International Office. So uh, at the beginning of my talk, I'd like to read this white ashes first today. So if you can read together with me, that's I appreciate. White ashes. When I deeply contemplate the transient nature of human existence, I realize that from beginning to end, life is impermanent like an illusion. We have not yet heard of anyone who lived 10,000 years how fleeting is a lifetime. Who in this world today can maintain a human form for even 100 years? There is no knowing whether I will die first or others, whether death will occur today or tomorrow. We depart one after another more quickly than the dew drops of the roots or tips of the blades of grasses. So it is said. Hence, we may have radiant faces in the morning, but by evening, we may turn into white ashes. Once the winds of impermanence have blown, our eyes are instantly closed and our breath stops forever. Then our radiant face changes its color and the attractive countenance like peach and plum blossoms is lost. Family and relatives will gather and grieve, but all to no avail. Since there is nothing else that can be done, they carry the deceased out to the fields and then what is left after the body has been cremated and turned into midnight smoke is just white ashes. Words fail to describe the sadness of it all. Thus, the ephemeral nature of human existence is such that death comes to young and old alike without discrimination. So we should all quickly take to heart the matter of the greatest importance of the afterlife and trust ourselves deeply to Amida Buddha and recite the Nembutsu humbly and respectfully. So this is the English translation of the White Ashes written by our eighth religious leader, Renyo Shonin. He wrote this letter about 500 years ago. Then uh, in the Jodo Shinshu tradition, 
Buddhist minister, we always read this white ashes, either in English or Japanese, uh, for the Buddhist memorial service or funeral service. So I have been the Buddhist minister maybe about 15 years. So I don't know how many times I read this white ashes for the memorial service and the funeral service. Then even before I used to listen to this white ashes. So, but before, after I became a Buddhist minister, one time, one time, I couldn't read this white ashes. So when I officiated one memorial service, uh, but I couldn't read it. That was just before I came to United States, that was 2009. I performed a pillow service, Makura Gyo, in Japan. The deceased name was, uh, his name was Ryota. Ryota had a muscular dystrophy then from when he was born. So the lifetime of the person who has this illness is, I heard, only about 20 to 30 years. Therefore, from the day he was born, his family had to take care of him. So they stayed together, but uh, when uh, Ryota was about 20 years old, he was sent to the hospital because he needed to take uh, some special treatment. The hospital was quite far from their house, but his mother went to the hospital to take care of Ryota every day, every single day. So it was so hard for the, for the mother to you know, visit, commute from the house to the hospital because it was kind of distance. So the family decided to move to the city to be closer to the hospital. Just when they were preparing to move, the family lost the younger brother at a sudden death. They had a deep sadness but the still, they moved to the new city for Ryota. As few months after making the move, Ryota's father was not feeling well. So he went to the hospital, then he, he had already been diagnosed with terminal cancer at that time. I couldn't imagine, you know, how Ryota's father felt because the family moved to the new city, new house to support Ryota. Probably the father wanted to support his wife because she was taking care of Ryota every day. So he really wanted to support the family. However, now he was diagnosed as a terminal cancer. He must feel have been both frustrated and sad. He must think he was going to do for the family as much as he can, but because of the, his, uh, his condition, he couldn't. Also, how difficult it was for his mother, Ryota's mother. She just lost one of her son and now she had to take care of her husband and her son. Although she did her best, the father passed away in March. Then my father, who was also the Buddhist minister, my father and I conducted Ryota's father, his uh, funeral service. I remember that the mother was crying at the funeral home, funeral hall. After the service, she told us, I do not have time to be depressed. I have to, care, I have to take care of my son who is, who is dying. That's she just said. There is a tradition of Seventh Day Memorial Service. So every seventh day until 49th day, the family asked this minister to conduct a Seventh Day Memorial Service. After that, there is a tradition of the monthly memorial service. So from my temple, 
So one of the temple uh, minister, Buddhist minister, go to visit this family to conduct these services. In June, I was supposed to visit this family, family's house to conduct uh, Ryota's father's monthly memorial service, but it was canceled because Ryota's condition became worse. In July, my family temple got a phone call from Ryota's mother. Then she told us Ryota passed away. Then she requested for his makura gyo pillow service. Probably at that time, I was the only available minister at my family temple. That's why for my father asked me to conduct his makura gyo pillow service. When I visit the family's house, it was my first time to see Ryota because he was always in the hospital. On that day, his body was laying on the, his bed on the tatami mat. I sat beside him. His mother said he was fighting the illness for a long time since he was born. Now, finally, he could sleep well. There were two photos on the wall. One photo was uh, his younger brother. The other was his father who both passed away recently. His mother and the three relatives were sitting behind me. I started chanting the Amida Sutra. And at the, at the end, after the Amida Sutra, I was supposed to read the white ashes for this service, but I couldn't read it. I couldn't read it because I felt so sad. I felt the white ashes is too direct of the expression for them. For them to hear, it would be cruel, and for they have been living with so much loss and sadness. So white ashes, you know, there's an English translation on the program, but it says in Japanese, let me read it in Japanese first, like, ashita ni wa kougan arite, yube ni wa hakkotsu to nareru mono nari. Although in the morning we may have radiant health, in the evening we may return to white ashes. Tada hakkotsu no mizo no koreri, leaving only the white ashes. Ningen no hakanaki koto wa roushou fujou no sakai nareba, the fragile nature of human existence underlies both the young and the old. They were living Renya Shoni's letter. Their life was on white ashes. On that day, I skipped reading the white ashes and went back to the temple. The funeral service was scheduled next day. This is in Japan, funeral service was scheduled right after uh, the person passes away. So next day was funeral service. The, again, my father and I were going to conduct Ryota's funeral service. On the way to the funeral home, I talked to my father about the pillow service, Makuragyo. I told him I, I couldn't read the white ashes. That was so difficult for me to read it. So it is not, uh, I couldn't, just I couldn't do, I told her, I told him. I expected his reply like, uh, okay, then I wanna read it today. That's I expected my father is gonna say it to me, or okay, I understand it. Let's change the service program. Let's read another Gobun Shou, another uh, Lenya Shonin's letter. These were my expectations. But my father said, okay, you read it white ashes today. That's it. You do it. Just you do it today. I couldn't understand why he wanted me to read on white ashes at that time. I was puzzled what he said. I really didn't want to do it at that time. I didn't have enough confidence to read it. I was afraid 
Ryota's mother might be upset. But on that day, because my father told me, I read it. Later, I gradually changed my mind and understood the importance of reading of white ashes. In my point of view, as a bomb lay person, you know, bomb's point of view, I just see the Ryota's life, you know, the family is sad, kawaiso, or unhappy life. I'm kind of judging this person's life, unhappy or sad life. Because, you know, he was still young, 20 something years old. Then this family lost uh, three, the, you know, mother lost three family members in a short period of time. I couldn't imagine how his mother felt. But when I think about Ryota's life, he lived his life as much as he could. That was his life, he could. He did live his life as much as he could. Amida Buddha's teaching, you know, we are Jodo Shinshu followers. Amida Buddha is saying, just come as you were. Just come as you were. Amida Buddha is not judging short life or long life unhappy life or happy life, sad life or uh, not sad life. Amida Buddha is accepting our life as it is. I am the Buddhist minister to convey this teaching to the Sangha members, to the families. So probably this is my, my take, my appreciation of my father's comments, but what are you doing? You are the Buddhist minister, aren't you? You are the one who deliver, who convey the Amida Buddha's compassion, wisdom and compassion. What are you doing? You have to, that's your job, that's your responsibility. Why are you judging your, 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 you know, that Ryota's life? You try your best to accept Ryota's life as it is. Try to convey Amida Buddha's wisdom and compassion. That's why you are conducting the service. That's why you are reading the white ashes. That's the things minister has to do. That's my appreciation now. It, it was still hurt, you know, as a human's point of view. Yes, I still think Ryota's life was short. As family must feel uh, so sad. I still feel that way, but at the same time, as a Jodo Shinshu follower, then which we are listening Amida Buddha's wisdom and compassion, we are keep saying, you know, Amida Buddha accept the life just as it is, just as they are. At that time, is a precious occasion for me to convey this teaching. So today uh, we are uh, conducting the All Sangha Memorial Service. All different people's names and pictures are in this slideshow. So we probably, you know, everybody has a different life. So we try to accept, we try to remember their life as it is then try to express our appreciation and respect to the Amida Buddha and our loved one who passed away before us. So this is the one of the purpose, uh, uh, main purpose of the All Sangha Memorial Service and the Buddhist Memorial Service. At the end of my Dharma message today, I'm gonna read on white ashes again. This time I'm gonna read it in Japanese. So please listen deeply the words of Renya Shonin, who wrote this letter about 500 years ago, which is a letter I couldn't read it for the Ryota's pillow service. So please think about the meaning of the white ashes. Then please reflect upon your life and your loved one's life through the teaching of white ashes, Amida Buddha's guidance.
発骨症日本語で唱えさせていただきます。Yeah, please listen deeply the words of Renyo Shonin. <笑>それ人間の不祥なるそうつらつら感ずるにおおよそはかなきものはこの世の四中十幻のごとくなるいちごなりされば未だ漫才の人参の受けたりということを聞かず一生過ぎやすし今に至って誰か百年の業態を保つべきや我や先人や先今日とも知らず明日とも知らず遅れ先立つ人は元の雫末の梅雨よりも茂しと言えりされば明日には紅がんがあって夕べには八歩となれる身なりすでに無情の風来たり濡ればすなわち二つの眼たちまちに閉じ一つの息長く耐えぬれば紅眼むなしく返じて通りの装いを失いぬる時は六神眷属集まって嘆き悲しめどもさらにその甲斐あるべからず。さてしもあるべきことならねばとて野外に送って弱の煙となし果てぬればただ白骨の溝のこれに哀れというもなかなか愚かなりされば人間の儚きことは老少不浄の境なれば、たれの人も早く五章の一大事を心にかけて、阿弥陀仏と深く頼み参らせて、念仏もすべきものなり、あなかしこ、アナカシコナモアミダブツナモアミダブツナモアミダブツナモアミダブツナマンダーナマンダーナマンダーありがとうございました